a very interesting article from the BBC saying that uh, Finland and Sweden are having their NATO application blocked by Turkey. Now, this is happening for a bunch of reasons from Turkey's point of view. One is because of the 2019 arms embargo that Turkey was put under by the Nordic, two Nordic countries because of their uh, incursion to Syria. And the other one is because they accused them of harboring um, Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK. Um, they, they, they accused those con- the Nordic countries of being um, hubs for these terrorist organisations, the, the, the ones that actually Turkey sees as terrorist organisations, who, according to them... Uh, were responsible for orchestrating the 2016 coup attempt in Turkey to overthrow the government, and um, yeah, so this is uh, this is a big deal because under other than under the NATO rules, um, all all member countries of NATO have to agree on the application uh, admission of a new member, or oh, except for one now. So we have 29 agree. Turkey doesn't agree, and this is a big deal for NATO because Turkey, if if they get upset about this, and and the US particularly who's the number one military power in NATO and Turkey's the number two military power in NATO, if their wants are not taken into consideration, then Turkey might leave the alliance, which would be a big loss because compared to the two Nordic countries, the, Turk- the Turkish military force is bigger than both of the Nordic countries combined. Now, Turkey is the less expensive country to be in, so their GDP, but their GDP is still... Not, no, sorry, their, their, um, their, their military spending budget is still around twice, double that of both uh, Finland and Sweden combined, about $18.6 billion for Turkey. Now, in terms of active military personnel, this is where the numbers really stand out. For Finland, it's 14,600 active troops, Sweden, 24,000. And for Turkey, a whopping 425,000 active military personnel. That just goes to show the significance of Turkey in the lot and the alliance. And the article actually states that you know NATO is more than happy to welcome the Nordic countries into the alliance, Finland and Sweden. Um, it's more than happy to welcome them in, but hey, your second biggest military power in the alliance is blocking them, whom we don't hear much from. So this is very important and kind of stresses the the it's kind of highlighting a potential division within the alliance that, hey, if one of these countries are actually invaded by a, by a foreign force, is everyone really going to support them as if it were their own territory? This, this is a big deal because, yes, they might send some support, a few thousand troops here or there, but the, the illusion that we have is, hey, if, if one boot is you know, steps from a, a neighbouring country or a foreign power, one incursion is made into this country, you know, the full force of NATO will come down. But the reality is every single NATO country is just trying to do what is best for its citizens and itself financially, polit- politically, um, you know, socially within the country. So really for any one country to commit militarily to defend another country, that country has to have the support of the citizens. And the soldiers who are going to be fighting in that war, because if the soldiers that are in that war, if they're not, you know, on board, they're not going to really want to fight. So this is where we're starting to see division in NATO, and it's very important to keep a close eye on this. Um, so, so yeah, and, 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 and going back to the point of Turkey's incursion into Syria, it's interesting to point that that wasn't made such a big deal as as Russia's incursion into Ukraine, because Russia still claims that Azov Battalion, they're a, they're a, um, a terrorist organization, neo-Nazis, and Turkey still claims they're a terrorist in, in, in Syria. So why didn't we see the same kind of upheaval, the same kind of, the same kind of, um, the big kerfuffle, the big, uh, the big hoo-ha, the big noise being made about, uh, about about um, Ukraine, why don't we see the same kind of thing in Syria towards Turkey, who invaded the country? So it's all very interesting, and uh, it'll be very interesting to see what um, what Turkey does. I don't think they're going to be back down because they've clearly stated that the both Nordic countries should not try and send in diplomats to try and sway their opinion, and this will be a major moment to see um, how seriously. The U.S. takes its um, takes the opinions of its fellow NATO members. Whether the the U.S. is just using the NATO alliance in Europe to um, to 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 try and 
unhinge the major power, which is Russia, or whether they actually care about the uh, countries in, in, in Europe. Um, the consensus, my personal opinion, is they don't. They don't really want a strong Europe. They want a divided Europe, a weak Europe, because that essentially means that they can provide support after the fighting is done and the destruction is done. The, the um, American technology, American resources can be sold to these countries, as a lot of weapons were sold um, to, to various um, countries during World War Two, including uh, UK, which which was the end of World War Two was the mark of America's ascension into uh, the global power that it is now. So, the next few weeks will be very interesting to see what happens with this application. And um, Turkey seems to be sticking to its guns, uh, and yeah, the division within NATO is a close thing to keep an eye on because you know if they're divided, they fall. And if Russia sees that weakness or China sees that weakness, they're really not going to take NATO very seriously. And that's where we're going to have problems. So we really need a united NATO, a strong NATO. And, um, you know, if that means, I don't know what that's going to mean. If that means these Nordic countries not getting admitted for the sake of the interests of Turkey, then, you know, we'll see how seriously the US takes that because it's mainly the US that's the global power in NATO. So... Yeah, interesting to see what happens and we'll keep a close eye on it. Alright, peace out.